I now call to order the New Carlisle City Council meeting March 18, 2019 at 7 p.m. Mrs. Byrne. Mayor Reynolds. Here. Mr. Shammy. Here. Mr. Lowry. Here. Mr. Cobb. Here. Mr. Cook. Here. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Here. Five members present. Fantastic. You all mind? No, sorry. You all mind standing for the uh, invocation by Vice Mayor Bill Lindsay. Bow your heads, please. Heavenly Fowler, we thank you once again for allowing us to come and do this business for this city. Father, there's a lot of things we need to do. We need your guidance. We ask you to look over all of our citizens, everyone that's here tonight, especially the, the uh, students. Father, we ask you to protect our law enforcement, our military, our firefighters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on. We'll do the flag, the pledge at the back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Action on the minutes. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. I move to accept the minutes of the work session 211, special meetings 213, 220, and 225. Is there a second? Jeremy? Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Yes. Mr. Cook? Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Minutes accepted 6 0. All right. Action on the minutes for regular meeting 3 4 19. So moved. Yep. Any discussion? Nope. Mrs. Burner. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Cobb? Sustain. Mr. Cook? Yes. I you were you said that one. Right? He missed about half of it. No. That was on March eleventh. Oh, that's right. You were here for March fourth. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Abstention. Mr. Chammy. Yes. Minutes accepted, 6-0. Fantastic. Communications none tonight. City Manager's report, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, uh, Mayor Reynolds. Uh, members of council, <coughs> members of public, would like to share with you the City Manager's report. We'll start off with our finance discussion with our finance director, Ms. Debbie Watson. Hi, good evening, council, and <coughs> residents, and students. And always nice to see some fresh faces here. Um, I'll begin with our February, February total revenue was $316,520.81. Our February total expenses are $277,596.39. Uh, once again, as long as we keep this going, bringing in more revenue than we're spending, that's, a, that's always a good thing. Our year-to-date total revenue is $641,519.51. And the expenses are $571,594.71. Um, for the council, you can see what reports are included this evening. Um, I wanted to say that coming soon, um, analytical charts and reports. Uh, Mr. Bridge and I will be training on the analytical portion of the new software for the next three to four weeks. Um, I'm very excited to see how it will visualize our financial progress for the city. It's always nice to see visual things to help you see how we're going up and down with uh, our finances. Council, any questions? Any questions? No, nope. thank you, Ms. Watson. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Watson. And moving on with the service report, uh, I will be giving Mr. Kiko's service report this evening. Uh, service department, street department, uh, currently has about one ton of cold patch asphalt. They're filling potholes as they appear. Uh, the best way for cold patch to be effective is to place it in a dry pothole for, for it to have any chance of staying uh, in long term. 2018-2019 various road projects, Galewood reconstruction project, the 300 block of Galewood Drive will be reconstructed in 2019. Engineering is complete, plans, um, at the, plans are at the county being put out for bid. We'll, we will be attaining estimates for more possible street overlay projects. Uh, 2019 wastewater plant influent building upgrade anticipated arrival for the influent pump is April 12th 2019 currently reviewing the plans for the final details in order to put it out for bid traffic signal upgrade project currently working on the right-of-way acquisition phase of the project construction is still estimated to begin in 2020 
Any questions regarding Mr. Service, uh, our service department's update that I can relay back to Mr. Kitko? Council? No. No? Thank you, Mr. Brader. Sure. And moving on with the city manager report under a fire discussion, our fire chief, Chief Presley. Mayor, Council, citizens. Uh, for the month of February, the New Palau Fire Division responded to 62 EMS calls in the city, 13 EMS calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 10 fire-related runs in the city and two in Elizabeth Township. We had three EMS calls answered by mutual aid by either Pike Township or Delta Clark due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered two mutual aid responses for Pike Township and one for Bethel Clark. In the month of February, we the division responded to one overdose call. Uh, we, are, we have started our CPR classes back. Uh, the department is now in what's called an ASHI. It's a, the, basically the same thing as American Harp, it's just under a different uh, title uh, for CPR courses. If any groups are interested in wanting these CPR courses, uh, please contact the station at 845-8401 and we can set you up with our instructor and get you a class start done through them. Uh, with the CPR, it's, we're able to teach everything from layperson CPR, which is normal one-person CPR, all the way up to healthcare provider, which is like EMS personnel or nurses, LPNs, that type of thing. We can cover all, all branches of the courses and get them taken care of. Other than that, that's it for February. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lowry. Hey, thank you for the report. Uh, I don't know if you can answer this or <coughs> talk about it. I was just going to ask you, do you have any idea, is there any idea of what caused the fire, the big fire over here? It's undetermined at this time, but more than likely was due to um, electrical failure in the garage. Really? Okay. The fire started in the garage and moved into the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Council, any other questions? <coughs> no. Thank you, Chief Trustee. Thank you, Fire Chief, Chief Trustee. Moving on to the uh, City Manager Report under the police discussion, our police administrator, Sergeant Underwood. Thank you, City Manager, Mayor, Council, audience, and students. In February, New Corral deputies were dispatched to 44 calls. We had assaults, we had one, domestic violence, we had nine, theft, we had four, nine injury crashes, there were four injury crashes, we had none. Citations, six, drug complaints, zero, overdoses, we had two, attempted suicide, none, and burglary, there was two. Then on March 11, 2019, Deputy Joe Liming was transfer, transferred from the New Corral Police Division to the Clark County Sheriff's uh, Road Patrol Division. Deputy Liming worked third shift for New Corral. New Corral <coughs> did a great job for us, and we wish him the best in his new assignment. Then on March 11th, Deputy Beastline, Elizabeth Beastline, was selected to fill the vacancy from 7P to 7A on third shift. Deputy Beastline has worked for the Clark County Sheriff's Office for the past five and a half years. She went to Clark State Community College, then went on to Wright State University. And Deputy Beastline is looking forward to working in New Orleans, anxious to get to know the citizens. Clark County Schools will be on spring break starting March 25th through March 29th. Students will be at home and out playing, so please drive carefully. And as always, please contact the Clark County Sheriff's Office at 937-328-2560 if you witness anything suspicious. This could be the phone call we need to solve a crime. And that's the report for tonight. Thank you. Council, any questions? No. Thank you, Sergeant. No, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Sergeant Underwood. And moving on with the city manager report under informational items. I only have two updates. The past two weeks, I have been in various meetings um, and a lot of meetings pertaining to the new building. Um, so new building updates. We have a closing date of 329 of 19 with occupancy 10 days after, and that date has not changed. Um, we, I have scheduled meetings with uh, two movers. Uh, I got one quote back today in the email. I'll be reviewing that and supplying that to council. And the other quote I'm still waiting on, I did have to send in additional pictures of what they needed to move out of my office and also Howie's office for them to give us a final quote. So I sent those today. And once I have those quotes back, I will update the Excel sheet that I sent out to council that's tracking all the uh, prices. Um, Architect, first proposal is, is in and the council is reviewing that. Um, we also have our uh, new Kalal health stats from uh, January, February of this year. So please review those. If you have any questions on those, I'll be happy to try to entertain and answer them. Council, any questions? Nope. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Bridge. 
Uh, comments from members of the public, please limit comments to five minutes or less and state your name and address, please. Hearing none. Committee reports none. Resolutions none. Mrs. Burner. Right, ordinances. This evening we have ordinance 19-05, public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance to authorize the city manager to renew a contract with Elizabeth Township, Miami County, for the purpose of providing fire and emergency service to a portion of the township. Council. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Vice Mayor. Uh, move to accept ordinance 1905, 19-05. Second. Second. <clears throat> Mr. Cobb. <clears throat> Mr. Bridge. I got you. Just taking a note. Sorry. It's all right. An explanation of this uh, ordinance. Uh, every year we, uh, every three years, we provide fire and EMS service for Elizabeth Township in Miami County. And this just gives me the authority to sign off on that agreement for another three-year term. I would like to make note that on page, the first page of this agreement, um, I had uh, someone uh, pull out a error that I would like to maybe have most of the council fix. Okay. And it's an incorrect spelling of principle. And it's on the first page, uh, 2C, second sentence. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. I move to accept the correction in the contract that Mr. Bridge referred to. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Shammy. Discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Burner. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb. Yes. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Motion accepted. And then moving on to the ordinance vote. Yep. Any Anything comments else? on the ordinance before we go? Nope. Okay. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Reynolds. Yes. Mr. Shammy. Yes. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Fox. Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. <clears throat> Moving on to Ordinance 19 06, introduction tonight, public hearing in action on 4 1 19, and ordinance amending Chapter 238 of the Codified Ordinances of the City of New Carlisle regarding the Division of Fire. And then. Is there a motion to break rules of council for the introduction of ordinance 1907? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Bridge. You, oh, let's vote on that first, sorry. Who was the second on that? I'm sorry. Mr. Lowry. Lowry. Um, we're gonna vote Mr. Cobb. Voting on breaking rules of council. Yeah. Mr. Cook. Yes. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Mr. Lowry? Yes. Motion accepted 6 0. All righty. Would you mind reading ordinance, the sure. introduction to ordinance 1907? Ordinance 19 07, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to accept a proposal and enter into a contract for architectural services to renovate a building on real property located at 101 South Main Street, New Carlisle, Ohio. Thank you. Other business, Congressman Warren Davidson will hold mobile office hours at the city building on the fourth Tuesday of each month at 1.30 p.m. until 2 p.m. Crime Watch is Wednesday, April 10th at 6.30 p.m. Location in Smith Park Shelter House. Mrs. Berner. Um, I wanted to just say last week when Mr. Lowry graciously <laughs> put me on the spot and uh, we're living this again, huh? said to say something, just like introduce yourself, and I don't even truly know what I said when I left. I thought, I seriously have no idea what I said. But I do know that I had said that I was born and raised here and grew up here in New Carlisle. And um, so on my drive home, I thought about it. And I know I see some of you here can probably relate um, to this. As I was growing up, we had the pool which was very fun. We had, um, I think, the Potato Festival. Do you guys remember that? We had fireworks here, so all of this fun stuff happened as we were growing up, and then it stopped. My, my mom ran the pool for, I don't know. Ever. A long, a long time. <laughs> yes. Like, I was the kid asleep behind the front desk on a pool raft. Like, it was probably from the time I was five, I think until I was about 15. So that was what I, did every single summer and i know there's some familiar faces that did that also 
Um, so it's just exciting to see the city continue to progress and do all of these wonderful things again because I was one of those kids where it was here and then it stopped and we had nothing. And talk about a town, I mean, we didn't have much to do growing up as once all this stuff stopped. So it's exciting to see the progress the city is making and I'm excited to see they continue to make progress. So that's what I would have said had I had time to think about it. I do take notes what you all say. I'm busy thinking of writing stuff down. So yeah. Well now you're and prepared for next year. What's that? You're prepared for next year's meeting. Uh, yeah, if you're We're gonna yeah. introduce her again. Right. <laughs> Every year. Every year. Every, Every year. Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Council Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lindsay. Uh, in light of this ordinance that was introduced tonight, I think we should think about scheduling a meeting, special meeting, for the passage of that ordinance next Monday. Because of the timeline, by the time Mr. Bridge signs the contract on the 29th for the building, and this ordinance takes effect 10 days or 15, 15. days later, it'll all correspond with getting the drawings done and stuff to see how much it's going to cost us to do this, to set this building up. Councilor, a second. What days do we have available? Mr. Lauder, are you free on Monday? Yeah, as long as it's after <laughs> 6.30. <laughs> after 6.30? Anytime. It'll, I would suggest it be at 7. Ms. Mr. Cobb. I understand we need to get out of here. <clears throat> We've got a school that's a headache over here. Our streets are deplorable. <clears throat> the 101 North Main is appraised by the county auditor of $115,000. We're spending $153,000. We're spending almost $38,000 to have it checked for asbestos or whatever. Mm -hmm. We're, yeah, it's in here if you read it. The architect. That's for the architect. And we've done the same thing at Madison School. We've done the same thing at Bell Manor. When we get done, we're going to be paying close to a $500,000 bill to get everything remodeled if we pursue this. And I was one that voted against it. And all I'm saying right now, we need to look into it more before we have another Madison Street School. Council, anything on Mr. Cobb's comment? Yeah, I'll just comment on it, Rob, and I, or Ron, I'm sorry. Um, and, I, and I definitely see what you're saying and, and your concerns. I, I, I don't think they're nearly on the same level as Madison School. I mean, Madison School pretty much needed to be, com in, in my opinion, I'm not an architect, com completely rebuilt. I mean, not maybe the walls, but everything else. I mean, completely rewired and HVAC and you name it. Um, I mean, that was just, I mean, that wasn't a smart move to begin with. I don't know whoever thought that was a good idea, but you know, whatever, it's long done and over with. I think our streets though, and that's, I mean, the streets are always a great thing to bring up, but I think we've been really knocking out the streets quicker than we ever have. So I think we're doing four this year altogether. I mean, I know they're not as quite as big as the ones we've done in the past few years. We knocked out, I think, five last year, three before that. Um, uh, you know, this, uh, Mr. Cobb, in my, just for me, I mean, any big move like this is something to make you a little nervous, regardless of whether you think it may be good or bad. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a change, and change is always a little nerve wracking. Um, but uh, I understand your concern, so. Can't Mr. Cook. I have to, in a sense, agree with both parties. My concern is, if we're gonna spend 500,000 on this building, per se, are we gonna suffer some backlash from the citizens in regard to spending this amount of money on that building as old as it is? I talked with a contractor today, most new commercial in the line of a city building, you're looking at $200 a square foot. So if we're talking 5,000 square feet, we're at a ballpark million dollars. 
I understand Arcanum is just now getting ready to put out for bid an 11,500 square foot building at a cost of a little over two million. I don't know. I'd, I guess I'd like to hear some input from the citizens as to whether or not we move forward. I ran on a <clears throat> platform of being transparent, trying to be frugal with the citizens' money. I don't know. Are we being frugal? Are we overspending? What are we doing? Well, I'm going to open it up. Oh, one second. I'm going to open up the comments from the public because we are suspended rules of council. Count the rest of you don't mind to the public. No. Not at all. Zimmerman, I know you had a question. Do you mind saying your name and stuff just so that we can have it all for Emily? Yeah. I was wondering why we're paying more than the appraised value. The way I understood when you said the value was appraised at, and then we're spending a lot more. Is that what you said, Mr. Cohen? And why is that? That we're spending more than what the building is appraised? Because there is a lot of renovations done. And just because it says appraised value on the website is not any indication of how much the sell price is going to be. I just bought a, I just bought a home in Bellbrook, Ohio, and my appraised value was X amount. But boy, we paid more, a lot more than the appraised value is. The appraised value, again, is no indicative of how much you should sell the, sell the property for. The appraised value does not take into account any kind of upgrades or addition that has been done on that property. You know, so if he's redone his HVAC and upgraded all that stuff, he needs to make his money back on that. They actually were selling it for 160. We actually got it less than what they're selling it for. Um, I have a question. Are they going to put an elevator in there? No, we are not putting an elevator in. Because council chambers are now on the first floor, not on the second floor. But some, I don't know whether this is true. Some mm -hmm. told me they were going to hold all the meetings and stuff upstairs. The original plan that was. And I'm like, how are all yeah. these older people? There's like 22 steps up. There's an elevator lift there system there. Lift. There is a lift. How long is it going to take to, mm -hmm. Of course, I know there's not that many of us here. Sure. I mean, I don't need the lift yet. But <laughs> no, that was a valid. That was a valid concern, and we were thinking. Yeah. So when we decided to put council chambers on the first floor, that changes your 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 what you used to using it for. So we would not be required to get the elevator. We weren't required to get the elevator before because of that stair lift, but council wanted to do it as a gracious because no one wants to take a stair lift every time they go upstairs. So we were looking at that if council chambers was going to go on the second floor. But now we have it now, council chambers on the first floor, as well as our high tra traffic uh, city operations. Like if you come in and talk about your water bill or have to pay your bill, you're going to go into that front, to the front door. You don't have to go all the way upstairs to get that. So the upstairs would be the rest administrative offices that we don't get a lot of foot traffic, like our finance director, Myself and that like I said anything that has a lot of foot traffic is now going to be on that first floor Yep And mr. Mayor do you mind if I jump in here real no, quick go ahead. Here's the thing. It's a change. I think Mayor <coughs> Lowry said it, but here's the deal guys we rent we pay twenty two thousand four hundred dollars a year in rent That is money that we are not ever getting back. We've been paying that now for 18 years At one point in time the city owned their building. They chose to sell it to rent where we're at that was not a good use of taxpayer money. This is going to cost them upfront funds. No one's denying that. But it's also as a means to an end. We have to write the rent check every month. Everyone's not going to be happy with it. No one, I mean, these, this is a big deal. What we are excited about is that we are going home. That 101 South Main Street was actually the city operations back in the late 1800s. There's a plaque out there that says City Hall. Um, we don't know how much the renovations are going to cost to be honest with you. So we don't know if it's going to be $500,000. Everybody I talked to said it's not that big of a, it's not that big of a scope of a project. The asbestos guy was in there this morning said, I highly doubt there's anything in here we're going to be concerned about. Structurally, I haven't gotten a piece of paper yet. The second inspection concluded the day. He said it's a very structurally sound building. We are going back downtown. We will be providing foot traffic to our downtown businesses. We are also would be having a, a, a very much more positive and conducive to productive work than what we are in now. Right now we are slammed in the old doctor's building like sardines. I do not have a window in my office. I, as soon as you walk in my office, your cell phone coverage dies because I'm in the old x-ray room and it's lined with lead. We have no room for storage. We are bursting out the seams. We are literally right on top of one another. If the price tag is five or six hundred thousand dollars, I will gladly take that and repay that. 
in, the, uh, in, in whatever terms council sees fit versus continuing on writing a rent check every single month. For us to build a new building is gonna be astronomically expensive. A million or two, that's gonna be done in the form of bonds. We have an opportunity here to return home in a very cool building to be part of our central downtown area. So I think most of the council members are on the same page. I'm on the same page. We are taking a leap of faith with this. It's going to work out. We just have to go through these processes <clears throat> to get where we need to be. Uh, but that's where we're at with it. Uh, I'm fully behind it. If anything changes in the next week or two, at this point in time, I will remind everyone that council already approved the ordinance. On March 29th, I'm signing. It's almost too late. If we don't have any out with the inspections, we don't have anything out with the asbestos report, I've already had the authority to sign the contract, and I, I will do as such. Thank you, Mr. Wirtz. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Sure. Parking, we are looking at taking uh, Washington Street. Right now it's parallel parking. That's where you just kind of move in and park the curb. We're going to switch those to diagonal parking, what we call 45. So you just kind of pull in and do this, kind of pull off to the side. <clears throat> we'll have a dedicated handicapped spot out there. And we're also going to have two dedicated spots for city business only. So if you need to run in and pay your water bill, you don't have to park in the back. You just park in one of these dedicated spots. Probably have one out front that you pull right into and then two on the side. You know, we don't get all that much foot traffic anymore. You know, two years ago, before we started online water payments, we would have foot traffic every day, lots of it. We don't have a lot of foot traffic anymore. Not like it used to be. You know, as far as employee parking goes, they, they can still park on the street. I will not let employees park on Main Street, take up the prime spots. We have a massive, minute, well not massive, we have a municipal lot right, right behind, behind the street. We also have additional parking on the other side of Main Street on, on the other side of Washington. So parking to me has always been a concern. It's not too much of a concern for me because I know where the places to go. And I have talked to the World Threads people. They used to have people up in their galleries, 60, 70 people at a time. And they said no one complained about parking. So I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue either. Even on Mondays and Wednesdays when we, I mean Mondays when we have council meetings, they're so far in the evening that a lot of those businesses are already closed by the time people will be parking there. So I don't think that would be an issue either. And very few times that we have lots and lots of people at our council meeting, usually it's about five or six. So I think that will work itself out as well. Okay. Mr. Lindsay, did something? The, uh, <clears throat> something that Mr. Bridge didn't state was the money we pay in rent, since we have been in this city building, or the city's been there, we have paid over 382000 I think it's 500 we, we could have bought this building and just about had it renovated for that amount. This building will pay for itself, like you said, in, in uh, savings of rent of over $22,000, $22,000 or $23,000 a year. Uh, the only reason or the only way I think this building would wind up being like Madison Street School is if there's absolutely no action by this council to complete this. Mm -hmm. Because this, this, uh, this building's going to be bought. We've already approved the manager to buy that. That's at his discretion now, not ours. And when he buys that, in my mind, this council has no choice to do what it takes to get us in there. And and uh, pretty much be done with it. The, if this town has a big boom, then you know if we have 10,000 people wants to move in here, 30,000 homes or something go up, then yeah, I can see spending a couple of million dollars to, to buy some land and build a new building. But right now, I think the building that we are looking at is sufficient and it's a lot more room for them that they have to work in this sardine can every day. I know I wouldn't like it. That's it. Thank you. So are we free for the next 25th? Monday at 7? Are you good, Mr. Lowry? Yes. Mr. Can, I, can I give an update on the timelines of, with the two scenarios? One second. Are you free for, the, for Monday, next Monday, 7 p.m.? Either of you two? Yes? OK. If you want to. Um, your timeline real fast. Sure, sure. If we have the special meeting and it's intro tonight and it's voted on in 323, that means the effective date of that ordinance is now 4-9. 325. 4-9. Okay. 
for the if it's 325 voted on, it right. takes 15 days, 49. That lines up almost perfectly because we signed that agreement on March 29th to buy the building, but they have 10 days occupancy afterwards. So that would line up. If they do not have the special meeting and we have to vote on that on the 1st of April, that's delaying the effectiveness of that legislation piece to almost 419 or 420. So that would be a lot of dead downtime that the, we couldn't do anything. That building would just be sitting in. So for the for the uh, spirit of moving, um, keeping the project moving, I had requested they have the special meeting for 325 to vote on the legislation tonight. That was introduced tonight. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Any other comments from the members of the public in regards to Madison Street? Sorry, uh, my bad. <laughs> Gosh, no. I have said that so much in my life that it just came out. I apologize sincerely. In regards to the World Threads building. No, I do not think it will be Madison Street School. Just throwing that out there. Is there a second? Second. All right. Mrs. Burr. I mean, yeah. oh, I was going to say. Oh, oh, you have something? Go ahead. I was just going to say one more thing. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Also, just um, another, you know, just the, the trust I, per for me personally, that I've gotten Randy. I mean, not that we shouldn't question anything Randy brings forward, because you should. <laughs> it's our job. But... Um, I mean, so far, I mean, if you look at his track record so far, I mean, he's, he's done a great job, him and the whole administration side. Um, so, I mean, like I said, I'm not saying we should question things that he may bring to us, but, uh, you know, I think he's done his research, and I have to agree with what he's presented us. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Berner. The second was Shammy, correct? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lowry. Yes. Mr. Cobb? No. Mr. Cook? No. Vice Mayor Lindsay? Yes. Mayor Reynolds? 100% yes. Mr. Shammy? Yes. Motion accepted, four to two. All right. Any other comments from members of council? Mr. Lowry? Mr. Mayor, make a motion we adjourn. Second. We are adjourned.